Hello everyone, we have come to the last lesson in this series, which is about in-depth investigation about a suspicious finding called callback. The callback's target is mainly represented by micro-calcifications, distortions, masses, and in some cases, asymmetries. What you want to do is, first of all, verify that the finding is real. We talked about that in the first lesson, the false positives, which can be due to the submission artifact alone, in the case of a very dense breast, not only then for a non-correct positioning. Then we have to locate it exactly and characterize it. This is particularly important, not only in terms of how it appears, hence its nature, but also in terms of its relationship with the surrounding tissue. The two radiographic systems used are spot and magnification view. What are microcalcifications? They are calcium deposits, and they are sometimes very small findings in the order of tens of micron, right? So it means that the blurring has to be very low. That is to say, the sparse resolution has to be very high. It has to be said, however, that the resolution of microcalcifications is high contrast resolution, even if they are very small, smaller than the pixel, they can generally still be seen because they are bright. They successfully impact the gray scale. It is clear, anyway, that in order to study the morphology, number and distribution, the mammogram must be produced satisfying the acquisition geometry they have been talking about in my lessons. Rotation or incorrect distension modify the anatomical reality, so the micros will not appear on the image where they really are, and it will also be difficult to assess how they are distributed. Not only that, compression must also be adequate, otherwise there will be a worsening of spatial resolution, blurring of the edges, as well as an increase in dose that is undue because the image will not be diagnostic. Masses are easily found if the breast is empty. In the case of the very dense breast, it is really difficult. Another important feature to mention is then low contrast resolution, where the lesion of similar density to the rest of the tissue is still identifiable. Again, the mammographer's work is incredibly important. The acquisition geometry must be correct, otherwise it will be difficult to characterize the lesion. Shape and margins are especially important. Compression is crucial. Again, if it is not adequate, an increase in geometric blur is introduced, which leads to a fictitious increase in lesion size. In addition, remember that evaluating in detail the margins is important. Irregular margins may indicate that there um, is an invasion of the surrounding tissue. Uh, here we are. Distortion are areas of convergence with sometimes barely perceptible tissue retraction. They are generally difficult to detect, but we can say that that diagnosis depends heavily on the work of the breast radiographer for positioning and compression. This is why standardizing the radiography work is so important. It makes it more feasible to compare examination performed on the same patient but by different operators. Asymmetries uh, are easier to detect, especially if the area of asymmetry is so large as this one. It is extremely important for the radiographer to check with the layout divided into the mirror layout, because in this way she, he, can assess whether the documented tissue is equal and sufficient on both sides. This is the bite right classification for micro. 
This is for masses, as you can see, as early as grade 3, a biopsy may sometimes be recommended. Well, let me move on to the spot view. It is generally performed uh, um, acquiring a uh, two projection of the standard examination CC and MLA projections if the finding is effectively visible in both. The dedicated compression puzzle is much smaller than the standard one, uh, which means that the compression may be more efficacious and more posterior areas may be reached. You want the lesion in the center of the field of view, and it is not easy to do, especially in very large and very mobile breasts. Also, it should be remembered that a very important compression could push the lesion away outside the fob, so pay attention to that. How to do it? First, you load on the monitor the standard examination, called also first level, where the suspicious lesion was found. You evaluate, as I told you in the second lesson, where the lesion is located, in anterior-posterior sense, this is the depth, both in CC and MLO projection. The nipple, as I told you, becomes a very important reference point. You ideally draw a line from the nipple toward the lesion, a to B, and then another line perpendicular to the first one, B, C, in the direction of the lesion, so medial or lateral in the CC, superior or inferior in MLO, depending on where the lesion is. Then use your hand, as you see in the picture. Lesion C is four fingers in depth and four fingers laterally. Then you do the same, the same measurement, I mean, on the breast of the patient. Of course, a uh, positioning of the patient must be the same, both in level 1 and in level 2 or call back. Another thing to point out is uh, that for the same compression value, since the contact surface between compression puzzle and the breast is much smaller in spot view, the resulting pressure is much higher and therefore more uncomfortable and the patient must be advised. An example. The spot view is usually required for masses. Magnification view is performed in the two projections, um, the standard examination, but preferably in uh, CC and lateral um, views. The examination must, however, be preceded by the acquisition of the lateral projection for triangulation. The platform, the magnification platform, is placed directly on the detector, which allows the object to be enlarged, depending on how far the object is moved away from the active area. Remember, all objects showed in diagnostic imaging are larger than reality, because the distance of the object from the detector is known zero. But magnification is based precisely on moving the object away from the detector, and this decreases the distance of the object from the pin source on the same time. Two considerations must be made. The source, the X-ray source, is not point-like, so there will always be geometric blur. Plus, there is the principal linear focus, the focus spot is not of the same size along the cathode anode axis, thorax, nipple axis. Okay? So, the spatial resolution is not the same. Deep lesion towards the thorax will always be less resolved than the anterior ones. And it is not only due to thickness, then, but to this physical principle, too. There are no solution here. Since an uh, ultra-fine focus is used and kilovolt mammography are low, the exposure time increases in MagSpot, sometimes 
a lot. To minimize the possibility of kinetic blurring, it may be useful to ask the patient not to breathe. Distortion. Again, compression is very important. You will understand that the skills required to perform mammography examination must necessarily be advanced. The radiographer must be able to assess the quality of images she he has produced and ask herself himself various questions, but especially one. Is the diagnostic information sufficient and correct? We have said before what the object correct means. The faithful reproduction of the original anatomy. And in case I realize it, that it is not correct, do I know how to do it better? Well, then, uh, I will close on this fundamental question. This serves lecturers. I bid you farewell. I hope to have uh, all of you at the next videos as well. In the meantime, thank you so much for your participations from all over the world. So I thank you really so much. See you.